So the in Chicago during your uh, attempt to really come up against you know to point out the unfairness of of this this um, keeping you from selling your art or giving it away you have started to give it away that's right I'm giving it away You're I'm giving I'm going, away down, I'm going where it's illegal for me to sell and I'm printing my art in public and I'm even finding resistance to that yeah so you had a story um, on the Michigan Avenue incident in your um, website the or on your blog which is wwwc drew d r e w dot com slash blog um, and it's uh, under free speech and arts policy. Uh, this, I think, you posted right after the election. Right, right after so the election. So this is all pretty current. Um, and the police told you you have to move or go to jail, and you told them you're not selling your art, and they they told you you can go around on State Street and do that if you want, but you can't stay here. This is yeah, my Yeah, that was a beat. matter of running you around. See, they, he wasn't serious about me oh. being able to go on State Street and do that. He was just saying, leave my area and go over to somebody else's area, and then when they find me there, they tell me the same thing, only another area, and they run you around. It's one of the games they play with us, you know. They're not being serious. I had a choice there. I either had to call his bluff and stay there and see if he was going to arrest me, right. or I had to leave. And was that uh, was that on the Mag Mile, or was it south of the, um, of the cultural This particular cultural incident center. happened at... Uh, just uh, by the Wrigley Corner. Building? No, uh, r right there on Michigan Avenue uh, by the Chicago Cultural Center. Just, oh. just where people enter the uh, commuter station there. Uh, although it happened to me several years ago, exactly the almost exactly the same way, and I blogged that one <laughs> up on uh, Michigan Avenue by the Water Tower place, where the first of all the the park board. See, this is the other issue. Park. All the parks in Chicago are off limits to artists to sell their stuff. All of the parks. That includes the entire lakefront. So by the time you add these two policies together, the peddler's license, which makes it illegal in all the decent places that are non-park, and the parks policies, there's no place for artists to sell their stuff in Chicago legally. We are criminals in the city of Chicago when we try to reach the public and develop a, an audience in public. It's outrageous. Um. Have has have you joined with other artists on um, in struggling to overthrow this? Uh, I'm trying to organize other artists presently. Okay, how's that going? Very slow because mm -hmm. uh, artists of Chicago has for so long had no history of of art sales on the street that uh, artists have had to find other ways, and they've been adjusted to that. So it's it's always a struggle to. Uh, alert artists to their speech rights. They're just totally unaware of what their rights are. And the public is, is as bad or worse. So it's a, it's a real struggle here in Chicago to, uh, but we're, we're gonna make that fight and we will win it eventually because of uh, opportunities like this to talk to the public. Well, I wanted to ask you because in your blog there was a picture of your setup and you know there were a couple things that the police said to you you've set stuff down you can't do that you've right. sat you down can't, you, you can't gotta do that you got to keep moving you can't put anything on the ground yeah, that's, these are these are bogus statements the, the, they they're bogus laws if you write them as a law why because they're general laws they're broad strokes they're laws the the case law in supreme uh, from federal court says that if you're going to write a law that limits speech, you have to write a narrow law. A narrow law, an example of a narrow law is you can't sell 10 feet from the corner and 20 feet from a, a doorway. But when you say you can't sell in a loop, that's a broad law. And a broad law is when you say you can't put anything on the ground, even if it's not blocking traffic, even if it's not a problem for the uh, public safety. Uh, uh, because that means that an older person who can't carry his stuff around all of his stuff around and can't move from place to place is then barred from uh, performing and selling his art in public. Actually, I wanted to I wanted to talk about the the question of homeless, but can I ask you this poll that is wrapped in this uh, woven stuff? Oh yeah, yeah, that's right out by the Arts Institute. I have that day I was selling. That's the election day. I was selling out in front of the Arts Institute. Okay, but that's that's like uh, something that has appeared on in front of the Heartland too. These woven pieces and oh, yeah. crocheted poles, etc. They're very beautiful. That's They're public wonderful. art. I know. I love it. I thought maybe it's probably to illegal. Do with it. I'm I'm quite sure that the person <laughs> had to do it and run fast in Chicago. 
Well, a couple couple things have wound up crocheted in front of the restaurant, and I think it's delightful. But it is clearly well, gorilla because yeah, exactly they, you have it to be a gorilla overnight. artist. Yeah, you have to be a gorilla artist in Chicago because art is essentially illegal here in this city. Well, the powers that be should know that that art. only strengthens you. Um, <laughs> tell me about uh, tell me about the difference between uh, a peddler's license and someone um, panhandling. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, Panhandlers, homeless panhandlers, or any panhandlers have won their rights in the city of Chicago by going to court and fighting for them. One advantage that homeless people have over artists is that they don't have any pla other place to go. So when they interesting, that would be seen as an advantage. Uh, yeah, uh, well, it is legally in that they're willing to fight for their rights because they have to fight for their rights because right. if they need a quarter for some food, that tummy doesn't care whether it's illegal to ask you for that quarter, but actually it's their speech right to ask you for that quarter. And uh, let's take the homeless artist, for example, down in the loop, for example. Mm. You see a lot of homeless people down in the loop. Some of them could be artists. Sure. Well, they can ask you legally for a dollar right. based upon their speech rights. But if they ask you for a dollar for a paper, a portrait of yourself on a paper plate, that's illegal. Mm. Because artists don't have their speech rights. Hmm. So that's a comparison you should think about. So um, I'd like to just get to w how you'd like to see this move forward before we call in our next guest. Um, how would you see, what would you think is the uh, best way for your organizing efforts to go forward on this? Well, what I'd like to see happen is I'd like to see some of these young uh, people who are concerned about their speech rights uh, come to our free screen print workshop for artists on Sundays at the American Indian Center, learn how to screen print, and join me out in public screen printing this spring and summer in places where it's illegal to sell your work and we can give it away because we have to educate the public as to this issue and our rights first before we sue the city and we will sue the city we intend to sue this city because this city has been violated us so badly that that's the only opportunity we have to gain our rights back we have to use uh, and the city has lost two lawsuits already on this issue so they're ripe to be sued it's time to sue the city of Chicago to gain our rights. And once we do that, we can create art scenes in various places, especially along the lakefront, where artists can sell their artwork and meet the public. And you, the public, can see the artists in your midst that are speaking for you. Well, I think that's um, it's needed. <laughs> it'll I, change I, Chicago for the better, believe me. Yeah. It'll make it, a, instead of a generic of city, it'll make it a world-class city. So tell us about the Sunday classes. Let listeners know where and when. and um, Sundays. Sundays, 3 to 6 uh, at 1630 West Wilson Avenue, the American Indian Center. Every Sunday, 3 to 6, we'll take Christmas off and New Year's and probably... Uh, well, those are the days we'll take off. Okay. Uh, any other Sundays, we'll be there. Okay. Well, so Chris Drew, who is fighting for free speech rights and of everyone, basically, even though your struggle is about artists' free speech, I think that uh, all free speech. And I, I was going to ask you, have you ever gone into Bug House Square uh, at the time of the Bug House Square debates? No, but I, I think that's something I should do. Yeah. In front of the um, the library there, right? The new right, Newberry. Right. Uh, of course, they've made Bug House Square a little less buggy. <laughs> it's very Washington Square now. Washington Park is what they call it. But uh, at least a couple times a summer, they actually mount debates again on soapboxes, just like happened for many many years. And Studs Terkel was part of that, and uh, God rest his soul. And um, a lot of a lot of good good folks from. Uh, from our town, we're part of that. Yeah, Carlos Cortez, one of our board members until he passed, was was uh, always uh, part of that as well. That's right. That's so right. Uh, maybe we should take our visual uh, images over that way this year and, and uh, carry on that tradition. I think by the time that people are doing all of their license gathering for the art festivals that happen all summer long, um, you ought to have a group. You ought to have a group who is saying, you know, there's got to be an alternative. Right. There, there does have to be there an really al needs to alternative. Be. 
Chris, thank you so much. Thank I'm so you, glad. We, I'm sure this is not the last time we'll talk about this. Well, I hope not. We'll, I we'll hope we get a big conversation going around this city on this because it'll help change the city for the better. Right on. All right. That was Chris Drew, and you can find him on the web at uh, www.c-drew, that's D-R-E-W, dot com.